Thanks, Sinead. As we consider what it's going to take to save our planet, we have to get serious about the challenges ahead. And one of those challenges, in my opinion, is misinformation. I'm reminded of a quote by James Daly who said, you can't be distracted by the noise of misinformation. That's always a really easy thing to say, but today we're facing a level of misinformation and disinformation our society has never experienced, and it's getting worse by the day. From trolls to deep fakes to bots, you know, how can you not be distracted by the noise of misinformation? It's impacting our ability to trust our institutions. It's impacting our ability to weigh or even believe facts. And in my opinion, it's one of the greatest threats we face as we try to fight and solve climate change. So let's talk about it today. In preparation of today's discussion, I... Misinformation and disinformation is a pretty resilient enemy, and we have to be even more resilient in combating it. me, I know you have received a number of messages from friends and colleagues over the last few months about all that's going on in the world from COVID-19 to the protests we're seeing. And it's sometimes hard to tell what's true and what's fake. What's fake. Research certain things that have been shared with me only to find out that it was given to me by an organization with an agenda, political or financial, just trying to sway me one way or the other. It was mis- and disinformation. And if it's hard for you and if it's hard for me, imagine how difficult it will be for our society to figure out how to regulate this and for us to figure out how to deal with it as we fight climate change. Having your minions at fight to then claim as proof of climate change is very on brand for Satan. 144 retweets, 306 likes. Very on brand, Lord. That's a bit goes right. I mean, there's a lot to unpack here. What's the difference between the climatology and Scientology? 180 retweets, 260 likes. <laughs> now that the COVID narrative is being derailed, the left has to use climate change as an excuse to limit freedoms. Zero retweets, zero likes. Oh, that's a dangerous lie. Uh, it must be a lie, right? Right. The science is settled on 
climate change like it was settled on COVID-19. There's one thing true about all scientific models. Garbage in, garbage out, hashtag guy go. Garbage in, garbage out, hashtag ego. One retweet, ten likes. Convict 19. Uh, since when did bots make typos? Hashtag confused. From all the voices we heard today, it's pretty clear that climate change is the challenge of our time. A challenge that can't be solved through old ideas and traditional solutions, especially when the noise of misinformation and disinformation is so loud. Ironically, noise and distractions can be a good thing. Study after study finds that when we ride with the distractions and live with the unexpected changes, we become more creative. We even become more resilient in the midst of change and failure. Yes, disinformation and misinformation is dangerous, but could they be a source of inspiration for us? Could the assault on the truth of what's happening to our planet be a catalyst for us to think about being more outside the box with our solutions, strengthening our arguments, being more open to alternative approaches and considering diverse options? We know that there's no silver bullet no angelic solution to building a zero carbon world. It's going to take solutions from every corner of our society. And as we work to reach that goal, the bots, the trolls, and the false information will be ready to stand in our way. So why not turn it on its head and use it as fuel? Why not instead try to turn misinformation and disinformation into social momentum to help us solve climate change?